Ed, good morning. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Fantastic. Let's get this out of the way really quick. Um, musician, actor, model, a face that was kissed by a thousand angels, a body that was carved by the gods. How do you even get up in the morning with all of that against you? Well, you know, it's my cross to bear. You know, God really gives it both hands, so I just... Uh... Well, from what I understand is you did not at all set out uh, to have an acting career. You just set out after school to do a little bit of modeling, maybe, and it sort of snowballed from there. But see, when I think of you in college, knowing you're a musician, all I can picture you is like... You're the dude with the acoustic guitar in the quad under the tree. All the girls around you yeah. are just falling all over you. No, I'm I'm Jim Belushi in Animal House who comes and takes that guy's guitar and smashes it. And then I plug my left paw into a Marshall and I start just playing Eddie Van Halen riffs. And yeah. And all the are like, wow, he's loud and obnoxious. Now let's go get a coffee and leave him alone. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I wasn't Mr. Kumbaya. I was more, um, I've always, I've, I've always been, you know, uh, into the harder rock. And, um, and that's, uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the sad truth. I probably, I probably would have gotten a lot more, uh, you know, uh, attraction if I had just sort of sung Jambaya covers under the tree. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at your bio. It says that you studied uh, with, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Joe Satriani. Yep. Bingo. Yeah. That, that was just a, a luck of the draw. He was the guitar teacher in Berkeley, California at Secondhand Guitars. So it was, you know, like every little snot-nosed kid was just lined up to take guitar lessons with him. Although we would have conversations where we'd be like, hey, is our guitar teacher better than all our heroes? He's definitely better than Randy Rhodes. I think he's better than Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> it was just like, we'd be like, oh, well. I go in and take lessons from him. So it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it was pretty incredible. And, and um, you know, and, and we were all just ecstatic when, you know, the world got to see the genius that we uh, that we were uh, you know, exposed to. Oh yeah, he's fantastic. Joining me right now, Ed Quinn, uh, a man who tripped and fell ass backwards into a bucket of luck. After you left college, you went all over Europe, uh, just being like, "Hey, have you seen how hot I am? Do you want to take a picture of this? Awesome!" And then you got paid for that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you know, it, it was it was it was definitely a. a, a Believe you me, I tried to write movies about the experience because modeling at the time that I did it was just mayhem, and um, and it was literally I was at Berkeley and I was about to go. Uh, I was just finishing at Cal and I was about to go do a, an internship with Coldwell Banker and go into commercial real estate. So I decided I didn't want to go to law school, and I'm and I'm getting out of my wetsuit in the in the parking lot of Ocean Beach, and this guy comes up to me and says, "Hey, you know, you want to take some photos?" And you know, my first instinct is like, "Oh, well, I'm, I'm about to get sex trafficked right here." Right, that's uh, how you die. Uh, I had, that's how you die. That's how you end up that your organs get sold on the black market. So I, um, but I, I fell for it because I had friends that had come up from Southern California you know, that were at Berkeley, and they had these modeling books, and they would like, you know, I'm I'm working every night through college at this, at, you know, as a valet, parking cars for five bucks an hour and tips. They'd go to San Francisco and shoot two hours of Macy's or Mervyn's or some crap and come back with 300 500 1500 dollars a day. I was like, so I, I knew that it, you know, like, all right, that, this is actually a thing. This is a business. And then, you know, I took the photos and got the agents and started working. It was kind of still kind of a lark. I was still going to go do the internship. And I get this crazy phone call from both of my agents, one in LA and one in San Francisco that I've been booked into the shows in Milan and Barcelona and can I get to Europe and, and then I just I called my dad you know he'd done a lecture tour and had like you know he gave me basically his uh, frequent flyer miles um, for you know like a, a plane ticket to Europe and I just got on a plane no literally had an address written on a piece of paper and just went to Barcelona and got there with 30 minutes to spare to go out and do a massive runway show with you know with every top supermodel and uh, yeah I ended up spending two and a half years there but I uh, was not much of a model I don't have much to show for my modeling career but I shot 37 commercials in like two and a half years while I was there and that's where I kind of was like uh, you know uh, it, all the pieces started to fit about how you go to LA and become an actor and yeah 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 so what was the strangest started, thing that you ever had to do in a commercial over there in Europe no, they were pretty straightforward, um, I, and I, you know, I did a lot. Well, one thing was I did a ton of cigarette campaigns, like a lot, and I didn't smoke, and I'd have to smoke in the commercial. 
And so that was one thing that was very European. Like, you have to smoke a cigarette. That's like, oh, boy. And so you got to smoke it like you, you're cool, like you're James Dean. So that, that thing, I remember once being, I was in Sevilla in the south of Spain at the Expo, and I was doing some massive commercials. Because the, commercial, the cigarette commercials used to be like these like movies that would play before you know, movies in the movie theater. So they'd be beautifully shot. They'd be these big, huge productions. And it's, a, it's like 115 degrees, and I'm sitting in this piazza in, uh, in, uh, in Sevilla, and I'm on take 10, and I have to light the cigarette and smoke it. And I, I was like, I'm going to projectile vomit over everybody at this table, everybody here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was so high. Um, but uh, it, uh, it, it, it worked out. I also once, it was the early days of... Uh, of wires, you know, like having people sort of fly where you're in a harness. And I was Superman rescuing a cat. I think it was a, it was a yogurt commercial. And I was, I, you know, I, and I fly up into the tree and I get the kitty cat and I bring it down to the super, super hot girl who's, uh, whose cat was up there and saved the day. And the harness got caught in the tree. Oh my God. And the harness also wasn't built for a, what for a six foot four, 220 pound guy. It was built for like a 5'10 guy. So I'm already like, like a question mark. I'm like so bent in this harness and now I'm stuck for hours at like four in the morning. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I was in so much pain for days after that. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, no bueno. Uh, actor, musician, yeah. Ed Quinn is joining us this morning. Uh, if only someone would cut him a break. Uh, let's see, he was in Two Broke Girls, Eureka, one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, I would say True Blood is pretty big for you, but right now the big one, the two big ones, One Day at a Time, and you play Hunter Franklin on The Oval. Um one day at a time switch to cbs they used to be on netflix but they have a new home and where can people find the oval okay so the oval is on bet um it's also on the streamer bet plus and i believe there's still episodes on bet.com awesome uh you know the show's done incredibly well our season finale of season one was a top rated you know new show on cable um we should be coming back probably early 2021 tyler somehow figured out a way for us to shoot in season two in the pandemic. And so we were, uh, 377 of us went into the bubble at Tyler Perry Studios and, and, and got that season in the can. One Day at a Time was canceled from Netflix, went to Pop TV. The pandemic shut that, shut production down of season four. And now, basically, and, and Pop TV is not doing scripted anymore. So One Day at a Time has basically been canceled twice, but refuses to give up the ghost. That how, that's how big the heart of this show is. It's now on CBS, Monday nights at 9 p.m. CBS is taking a long look. Uh, it, it, it's Norman Lear's coming home to, uh, to CBS. All his big shows, the original One Day at a Time, All in the Family, everything was on CBS back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also watch it on CBS.com. That does help us in the ratings as well. Uh, trying to find a new home for this, you know, beautiful little show. So um, if, if you can, please check it out. So a couple remaining minutes. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I could seriously talk to you for uh, a few hours. You're very entertaining and incredibly Hi. intelligent. And I'm already like, do you want to be on my D&D team? Um so when you were uh, making a name for yourself, slowly coming up in the ranks, you were probably in certain situations where you felt starstruck. Uh, you couldn't believe that you're on the set with this person or you're at a party with this person. I'm bringing this up. There was one time that I had David Spade on the show and he was talking about becoming like pretty known as far as SNL was concerned, but he found himself at a house party and he was standing in line for the bathroom behind Paul McCartney, right? There are different levels of celebrity. Do you have a moment when you first started coming up in the ranks where you're like, oh man, that was definitely the moment of I have arrived? I have arrived. You know, I don't know. It was so... That was the weird thing about starting in the modeling world. Because first I was in Europe, and I would just find myself at these parties. I remember being at this party at the at the Bandouche with, like, John Galliano was dancing on a table in a kilt, and, like, all the... Helena Christensen and, and, and Kate Moss and all these massive supermodels were there, and we had just gone to see uh, In Excess play. I was just going to say, was this like a George Michael video? Like, what were you in? No, no, no. no I was a, it, was, it was a Tuesday night at a club. And, <laughs> you know, I, walked, I, I, walked into, I walked into the 
uh, the, you know, like you, you, the one thing about modeling in Europe is you're just destitute the whole time because they don't pay you any money over there. They're like, oh no, you're gonna get these sheets and you go make money elsewhere. So in Milan, everybody was starving, and we never, so we'd always go to this one disco check because they would like give us pizza. Like we'd literally go for the pizza and they'd give us free beer to hang out there because we couldn't afford to eat anywhere else. And I go walking in at one point. What is that place? The Hollywood Club Hollywood. I go wander into Hollywood um, for the pizza. And I look over in the VIP room. There's all these long-haired dudes in, uh, in, uh, in in flannels, and I'm like, "Hey, you guys are Pearl Jam." And they're like, "You know who we are?" And I'm like, "Yeah, my girlfriend gave me your tape, Ken. Dude, it's so good." And they're like, "Do you want to come to our show? We got a show that we don't think anybody's going to show up." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just telling you guys to come. We'll come to your show." They're like, "Oh, thank God." I mean. It was that Stone Temple Pilots. I remember the BC Boys hung out in, in Milan with us for like two weeks because we, they just liked us all, but we were useless. And, and it was it, it was just that kind of weird thing where you just I don't know. So by the time I got here, it, it I so enjoy like you know I remember being at dinner and I sat down and I'm next to Clint Eastwood and Clint Eastwood was probably one of the main reasons I became an actor. And I wouldn't that didn't even talk to him. I wouldn't even you know I just was just like it just. It's just this weird thing where you can sit down at dinner at Dantana's and in the table next to you is Clint Eastwood. Or, you know, the first party I went to in Los Angeles was the L.A. Models Christmas Party. And the girls were amazing. I mean, it was just unbelievable. There's so much going on. There's so much overstimulation. But it's just like O.J. Simpson and Kelsey Grammer and, and the, you know, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy. And there's just all these, like, superstars and you're just going wow and i, I don't know it, it, it it's it, it's a weird thing when they're coming up the way that i did you just sort of get used to at any moment like the most famous person in the world be next to you getting a cup of coffee okay so if there's ever an opportunity where you are and you and i are in the same room i will like expect you to like rub my elbow or something give me some of that chimney sweep luck that you seem to are just be oozing <laughs> um ed quinn check him out in absolutely everything one day at a time two broke girls eureka young americans i forgot about that true blood you know him you love him and right now i just want to be best friends with him ed i would tell you good luck the rest of the way but you clearly don't need it <laughs> you do you, you haven't been there for the dark days, sweetie. So believe you, it, 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 it's all it's all feast or famine, and right now we're just uh, we just got a good seat at the table. Well, you know what? Enjoy it. You deserve it. I will, I will for sure. Thank you so much.